fact, it's been a really surprise sort of bestseller for st <laughs> stocking filler for poetry lovers everywhere, um, which has uh, been a really lovely part of it. But it will become clear why I called the collection um, Sprout. Um, lots of reasons, really, but it is linked with the vegetable, which is um, a favourite of mine, um, as will become clear uh, from the title poem, uh, which I uh, was inspired by my uh, paternal grandmother, Nell, and uh, this is Sprouts. Whenever I peel them, I channel her. I remember her vast lap spread like a proving bloomer over each side of the wheel back chair, her warm body swelling between the spindles. The grocer's evergreen net would empty, sag, next to a carrier bag set for peelings. Hands busy with the stubby knife, I see her slicing off the base, adjust the blade, her curved forefingers always pointing, made for knitting needles, pare away the papery leaves, her nails neat and slender as a model's, each half moon peeping. I didn't inherit those nails. Her mind elsewhere, each mouldering lump, through some quicksilver handicraft became a jewel in her hands finally carving its cross with artisan care. So as I peel, I smile, a task that always brings her close to me. A tiny cabbage, no matter how mud-clad, will end as green as paradise. Wrapped vacuum tight, squeaking against my thumb, it sits in my palm like a ready brain, glossy and new-veined, painted with a single rat's whisker, delicate as an eyelid. Each Christmas he brings me with high ceremony, the Brussels tree. I marvel <laughs> at the object, at its impossible rigidity, built like an alien colony. Strong stalk, thick and perfect, each offspring pert and perpendicular, gravity mocking and jaunty, locked on like a suckling baby or ribs from off the spine. Leaves within leaves, furled, waiting for my peeling hands. My lap, now roomy, holds dusty curls and bright green pearls, each marked with its cross, till heat will turn them yellow. Mm. Thank you. Mm. My, my, um, when I was sorting this out, um, I decided that I wanted the collection to be sort of bookended with each of my grandmothers. Um, they were very different, um, as you will see from the next poem, but each hugely important and I think a rich well of, of memories. So this is Home Remedies. A brown bottle full of strange milk for your coffee only, Grandma. In every handbag a brown bottle with a child-proof lid that would fit in your hand with its fading tan like a bar of pear soap or a lozenge. A toffee sculpture, smooth and strange, held an elixir that magicked the black to a creamy brew and a dreamy you. You eased the top, tricky, it clicked, you tutted and poured it slowly, slowly. Once, like perfume tipped on a fingertip, painted and chipped, you dabbed it onto my ungrown lip, hot, sweet, stinging, neat, your blue eyes sparking mischief. Brown bottle, strange milk, tawny skin, pleasure and sin. Bailey's incognito as medicine. <laughs> <laughs> tonight um, of, of kind of, you know, silly shoes and uh, Brussels sprout earrings, so <laughs> definitely my maternal grandmother. Um, now, Sprouts is also the title of my collection because um, the Brussels tree bearer there wearing his lovely Sprouts uh, shirt this evening, um, and I have been busy with four boys uh, who are our children, 
and um, and really they are our sprouts as, as well <laughs> and do make for inspiring and frustrating moments <laughs> um, and this is a poem that I wrote earlier this year because our youngest um, he's, he's sort of turned nine this year but he is the last if you like and um, mothers are they come to terms with this moment I think this is part throwing stones trying to skim like his father casts a clear arc from the boy to the sea from me to him the thread is fainter these days for six small years they are ours the mother's sons at seven they hello the father with the wonder of a glamorous stranger and we are dead to them, worse, as if never known, but for their expectation of softness. His heat was my heat, or mine his, his cheek to the wall of my belly, inside, then out. We were never lonely in our wordless understanding, simply no world beyond us. The worm of adventure nudges him on from our orchard, to this faster, farther vista, where he longs to join the male chase, become a boxing hare, printing his tracks away, away. The sea bucks, builds a high wave, the wall so swift it lifts his quick frame from these sands. And I am to trust he will lock us safe into his heart, buoyed and swim. Mm -hmm. So sorry, that's not mine. No, that's mine. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> you need that. Um, so um, this pamphlet came about because of a poetry competition that um, was organised by Dempsey and Weasel. And um, the, the winning poem um, is this next one, um, which, uh, which I loved writing and I enjoy reading, so I wanted to, to do it tonight. Um, even though I've done it quite often, it, it sort of never loses its joy for me, so I hope you get some of that as well. Um, and this is Stag. I need to make one thing clear. I didn't see the stag. My husband did. He'd been running. He came through the door, eyes alight, stood taller in the kitchen, his legs rooted wide to tell us both, his joy so urgent. Son and I sat wrapped by the boy in his voice, the wild life in his hands and his face, as he drew us a picture of man and stag who had met in the field this bright autumn morning. He lifted his arms in revelation, the size, the size of his antlers, the span, the height, the throat on him. He was praising the moment, too big for the kitchen, and we praised it too, for the gift of the stag now belonged to us all. That glimpse of the creature briefly rewilded, its beauty and might to be breathed, becoming before <coughs> us a blur of bristles and musk. <laughs> poem uh, was inspired really um, by something I feel is a slight gap in, um, in my experience of reading poetry um, in that lots of people write poems about their children, uh, particularly when they're small, but the experience of parenting an adolescent is um, a much more kind of bittersweet <laughs> in many ways experience and one that I am now uh, undergoing with my son who is 15 and who I must say can be wonderful he is responsible for the yes. for the front cover um, and has many many wonderful facets <laughs> um, but there is a challenge element there and um, Particularly with boys, I feel as though one of the ways I connect with him very often is by us going and doing something together. Um, so that it almost sort of allows our sort of experience of just being side by side to, to bond us while we, our focus is on something else. So I took him to the cinema um, to see Suffragette. Um, which I thought would be very important. Yeah. Um, you know, even when... 
when men, for, for better or worse, get accused of, of being sort of horrible or terrible in some way, uh, there still seems to be an accusation that it's the way their mothers brought them up. So we still don't kind of, you know, get out of that responsibility. So I thought I'm going to take him to see this film uh, and kind of, you know, make him understand something. Uh, although I'm not quite sure what it was so I was trying to get him to understand. Um, but anyway, this is our experience of being in the cinema, which was um, quite a surprising one, for, for, as you will see, for, for what happened. Um, it begins actually with a, a quote from Jackie Kay's poem, Going to See King Lear, um, where she writes, We breathe in, all of us, in one breath, waiting to be changed. So this is Suffragette. In the cinema with my teenage boy, I've brought him here to see Suffragette, refusing to answer my own internal why. I'm calling it history when really I want to move him beyond facts, timelines, sources, primary or secondary, to a place more tragic. Remember him hunk-thighed inside his pushchair? We stormed the polling station. He proclaimed, ladies died so mummy could have a boat. <laughs> <laughs> now I'll watch him reel in awe of womankind, begin to cherish heroines, mourn the fight. The room is full of white-haired women, a few are with their husbands, some with daughters, the lucky ones with friends. And from somewhere in the darkest corner comes an elderly cry. Why hasn't it started yet? A frail, feisty note, tremulous in the black as we watch ads. Jack the Gallant won't tackle Maggie the Flanker. Kira Knightley goads some chap with scent. A harried mother hankers after better stain remover. <laughs> Our heckler trills. Why hasn't it started yet? The film is ugly as all history is. Small hands clutch at rough woolen coats. A gravid iron sears. Child's mother's spit and tears. Behind us, mind crumbling, the old lady becomes a broken Philomela as her carers try to hush her. I don't like you. Go away, sounds her alarm to bristled politicians on the screen. I wonder if her mother is talking through her. I wonder what her mother must have seen. We emerge into real blinding sunshine. I am shaken. My son is calm, unstirred. It's important, he nods. It will win awards. I really want to see the new James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> this poem, which was inspired by my youngest, who, who set me a challenge one day in the car. He asked me to choose um, the best body part um, from his list. Um, so I only had four to choose from. The four will become clear as the poem goes on. Uh, but it is simply called, after my eight-year-old asked me to choose the best body part from his list. <laughs> so I will end with this one. Hallelujah, raise your glasses, jazz hands, clap hands, grasp the trophy, hold it high, because you can. Knead dough, slowly stroke limbs and cheeks, play notes, darn holes, sign on dotted lines, slap, cup, clutch, hold, keep all small things safe. Make a chain, a ring, an everlasting plea, a peen, for hands to be as hearts, open, kind, and mostly clean. Genuflect. Fall to your knees, curtsy, time step, river dance, because you can, can. <laughs> or once upon a time ago, you could, could. Strong <laughs> sinew, jointed joy, the muscle marriage of power and poise, diamond plio, plies, zigzag sprints, inverse tree trunks, box splits. Dash and swagger, grip your lover like Ariel in a cloven pine. Pistons in flesh. Pray let your legs last this lifetime. Sound a yawp, bite a hunk off a yawn, lick each lip and smile, pout, pucker, because you, shout it out now, can. Praise your air hole, cake lane, tequila lime sucker. Shape your noise into meaning, chew its fat and flavour. Take a journey to another's, make them flirt and dance and savour before the dance moves south in celebration of your wondrous impossible math. If seeing is believing, then faith can
can come from vision, and this world could be religion, so behold. Behold it all, each eyelash petalling your children's peepers, tiny blue streaks crackling from wide, eager irises, because you must. It's in the strong chord of a held gaze that thumps with revelation of who we are, what we mean, without a cliched haven, true sight will bring in silence. So it's eyes, little one, irreplaceable eyes, that we pray never fail as you grow, as you go, while you're gone and when you return. Mm. <laughs>